tell us about what your laboratory's principal focus is. Our laboratory's principal focus has been on a small heat shock protein mm -hmm. known as alpha B crystalline. Right. We have been working with that protein for over 30 years now. Mm -hmm. okay. So this, uh, this protein uh, is a lens protein actually. Uh, so for ages people thought yeah. that it is a lens protein, it provides transparency. And uh, that sort of drove us into looking at this protein mm -hmm. and say, well, we can clone transparency. We can look at its structure, yeah. we can find something there, and we can therefore regenerate transparency. Yeah. But it turned out to be a naive thought. It was actually, this protein is like any other protein we have known any other polypeptide, any other gene, like all, there are 2,200 proteins, 22,000 proteins. So it turns out that it is associated with all neurodegenerations, including retinal degeneration. And it is in the retinal pigment epithelium. And somebody suggested that it increases in its expression in the drusen, which are associated with AMD age-related macular degeneration. That became very tempting for us. We wanted to know what is it doing because we want to understand what's its function. So we decided that we should first understand before going into disease, we should know what it really does in the normal eye, normal vision. So it's a long story, so we kept on working with it. And we found out that this protein is very critical in maintaining protein homeostasis in the RPE. Protein homeostasis is a big term, but it simply means how shall proteins be made in a cell? Why are they directed? What do they do? And when they finish their job, what should we do with them? That is turnover. So you got to synthesize them and then degrade them. Okay, that's whole protein homeostasis. Now, how does this protein do it? We had no idea about it. It has always been known to be a protein which is known as a soluble protein. Soluble is when you homogenize a cell, you have particulate material that you can centrifuge and a material which remains in the water. But we found that it's not a protein of the soluble material. Within the soluble material there are membranes. It associates with the membranes. Previously nobody had thought of this protein that it goes outside of the cell. Everybody thought that it has to work inside the cell. And we found that we can find it outside the cell. So how does it get out of the cell? Again, there is nothing, there are usually signals on the protein which take it outside the cell, but there is none of that. It turns out it goes out of the cells in little packages which are, it's covered by the lipid. So nobody sees it. It comes out in little packets out of the cell. Those are known as exosomes. What is quite fascinating about exosomes is most of them come out of the apical side. RPE has two, 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 uh, two sides. The side that faces the retina, which the photoreceptors and the inside of the eye, and the side that faces your systemic physiology. So this, this epithelium is at the, at the interface of the blood retina barrier. This epithelium becomes extremely selective in letting molecules in that come from the blood, that come from your systemic activities, systemic physiology, and only lets selective molecules in. It doesn't let molecules come out. So it's a big barrier. It's a physical barrier. It's a physiological barrier. So physically, it has to stay intact. Physiologically, it has to be it has to be very active. It has to remain active. We therefore developed a thesis 
that this 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 what we call polarized epithelium polarized because it knows where is its apical side why it is its basal side it's north and it's south it wants to make sure that each one gets the appropriate signals so that north stays north and 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 the south stays south the systemic signals stay what they are supposed to do they do what they are to do and the signals that are on the inside of the retina they do what they do now imagine if those signals get crossed one of those signals is make blood vessels and if that blood vessel that signal doesn't stay on the systemic side it goes to the apical side you are in trouble we don't want blood vessels in the retina this is one of the things that's our one of the models so these exosomes are little packets of information which cells share among themselves they send them out and other cells pick them up so much so we already know from other work people have done that you can transform a normal cell into a cancer cell by taking exosomes from the cancer cell exposing this normal cell to these exosomes it becomes cancerous so these little packets contain tremendous amount of genetic information and this information sharing is lateral you can see it it's from cell to cell it's not vertical which is by me i mean i say vertical it's it's from your parents one cell gives rise to other cell it, it's not vertical but it's lateral transfer uh, information sharing that's extraordinarily important in order to maintain the status of the tissue now the tissue we are talking about here is rpe so so thus far in in the research that has been going on people have dealt with rpe as one monolithic tissue that every cell is same right but we have enough clinical data to suggest that is not the case simple example is geo geographic atrophy it breaks here it breaks here it breaks here it doesn't break all the way right. why if if something is going bad it should go bad all over because all those cells are same sure. but that's not the case there is heterogeneity in each cell which is that each cell is an individual by itself it has its own physiology own place within the retina and it communicates with the other uh, cells and that communication is very critical in order to bring up the phenotype of the rp what do you think of the triggers of this are what triggers a pathology right. uh, let me give you a very simple example this protein i'm talking about right. we will focus on about protein and you, it will it will eventually it will explain the questions that you are you are asking this protein was discovered yeah. uh, after we discovered it in 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 lot of other tissues there is a professor as joe horwitz in our department he is the world's leading expert on crystallins so when he saw this this is outside and he started thinking about what does this do he found out that this is a anti aggregation protein it doesn't let things aggregate it doesn't let things not addition aggregation 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 not addition addition is very important for cells but aggregation is bad for us as we grow older we have lot of aggregating stuff going on in our tissues so because it's an anti aggregation protein right. it seems to bind to anything you keep it in your test tube yeah. put it with one more protein it binds to it yeah. and so much so everybody thinks that this is a non specific process yeah. but it turns out it's not a non specific process yeah. now this protein also protects cells against stress mm -hmm. so if you take a cell which doesn't have this protein right. then introduce this protein into that cell yeah. that cell becomes resistant to stress one stress that will come to your mind is raising the temperature yeah. for example those cells survive because they have alpha b crystalline oh, wow. okay so cells which don't have this protein would like to survive but they don't make this protein but they get this protein from cells 
which produce this protein. Right, right. But how do you send this protein? You send this protein packaged in an exosome in a lipoprotein vesicle right. that protects it from seeing any other proteins right. and sends it to the cells which then pick it up and then change their physiology. It turns out right. this protein has a very important property which we completely don't understand. If we take this protein away from the cell, mm -hmm. that means we stop the mechanism that makes this protein right. in the RPE cells. Yeah. The RPE cells do not make any exosomes. Wow. That is the big discovery that is coming out in, in, in JPC now. Right. They don't make any exosomes. Why? Mm -hmm. There is no point in making any exosomes if we don't have the person who should be on the bus. Right. Why should bus go anywhere? Absolutely. So, Vidi, how do you see this panning out clinically? What are, your, what are the clinical implications of your Because we believe that this polarity yeah. of this, this epithelium mm -hmm. is very critical in maintaining the, the, the physiological function right. of the retinal pigment epithelium. Yeah. And RT does not fall apart simultaneously just like that. Right. It starts from a single cell just one cell yeah. that possibly gets confused doesn't know which is its inside and which is its outside doesn't know which is apical and which is basal right. and it is one cell that initiates this cascade of events and then in a focal point creates generates that atrophy at a particular place right. okay then at a different place because this cell initiates this, these, these, these aberrant signals, the other cells get those signals and they don't know how to work with those signals because they come from the wrong direction. Sure. So if we understand what I am saying, that there are aberrant signals which are cross signals which shouldn't be going to the basal side or shouldn't be going to the apical side, if we understand those signals, all we have to do is neutralize those signals. Okay. What we are trying to do is not treat the symptom, but treat the mechanism that creates the pathology. That's very critical. That's very elegant. Thank you very much. Very so what are your next milestones then in your current research? In our current research, we will like to proceed with this, uh, with our alpha B crystalline story, and find out now that it inhibits exosome biogenesis, how does it do that? Because you can't keep the cell inhibited. That is pathological. So how does the cell survive? It will only be evident to us once we know the mechanism that is involved in where alpha B is doing it. You keep this in mind. This is a lens protein, which is now very important for the RPE, for the back of the eye. It's quite, 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 quite. This is a whole new paradigm we are thinking. Uh, we hopefully think that we would like to characterize these signals. We, we already deal with this a little bit. Antibodies which we use to treat uh, AMD, wet AMD with, but we are dealing with symptoms there. We are not dealing with the mechanism. We would address the mechanism directly. So you ultimately see this translating into a, a small molecule that can be used? Uh, we definitely see it. Uh, translating into recognition of the signals right. and then generating antidotes. I'm not using the word small molecules uh, because it looks like that, that, that we think of small molecules as little bullets which are highly specific. That's not the case. Small molecules go everywhere. Right. Small molecules are not highly specific. Right. But we could, for example, use an antibody against this, 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 uh, this signal and neutralize it because it's coming out from this side. Right. We know where it is coming from. Yeah. So we, if we can recognize the signal, if we can recognize the targets, right. then we can create an antidotes to them. We can create an antibody. We know already how right. to do sure. that. We have a lot of experience in doing so that. So you see this as a monoclonal antibody? A monoclonal antibody or a monoclonal peptide antibody, a small humanized fragment. Right. I mean, VEGF is also involved in neurogenesis. So right now, 
we don't pay any attention to neurogenesis. We want to stop uh, vesiculogenesis. We want to stop blood vessels. So we, we, we stop uh, VEGF, but in the process, we are also generating other problems, Absolutely. primarily because we are dealing with the symptoms. Yes. I think this is a remarkable paradigm shift. Yes, this is a big, uh, remarkable I paradigm shift. You Thank work, you very much. Thank and you. We'll continue to follow your work closely and Absolutely. please keep us abreast of developments. Absolutely. Professor, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you.